Hello everyone and welcome back to more Knowing Wheel, where yesterday we return to look ahead towards the Italian Grand Prix. As always, I'm joined by Jamie183. How, how are we doing, mate? I'm good, yeah. I'm looking forward to the, the Grand Prix on the weekend. Uh, that's some words that I often put together. Yep. So, yeah, Monza. There's not an awful lot to talk about in terms of news, but um, yeah, only a week's turnaround since Zandvoort and also a week since Spa, so... Not much time for the teams to really make anything interesting happen, but there we go. <laughs> okay, that's that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. Yeah. But I think, I think you know, this is the first podcast we've done in a very, very long time. Actually, that we're actually doing in the morning. Yeah. Um, so you know, we're early. both both probably a little bit tired still, but the, the things we do uh, to get Formula One news out to you all as well. Of course, if you're new around here and you're watching this on YouTube and you don't want to see our ugly mugs, make sure you check out the links down below for Spotify. We'll also have links over, of course, uh, to Bybit as well, uh, F1 merch, you know, things like that, uh, and all the good things uh, that come with the show. Of course, Imperium experiences as well. Uh, the competition to still win Abu Dhabi tickets is ongoing, so we'd definitely uh, recommend checking that one out. But... Yeah, Italian Grand Prix this weekend. You know, like we said, we've had back-to-back -back races up to now. Three weekends in a row. It's been very full-on. Then, of course, sadly, we've got a three-week break uh, before we head out to Singapore, which is very, very sad. Um, but safe to say there's been a fair amount of talking points leading, obviously, through Spa, through Zanvoort. You know, we've, we've seen race fixing. We've seen <laughs> illegal cars. It's all gone on. None of it, of course, is true. Um, but, you know, it's, it's always good fun uh, to speculate, and I'm sure you'll see plenty of clickbait around on YouTube going, Yuki Sonoda deliberately did this or that or something. Um, but Italian GP this weekend, the home of Ferrari, and I don't think anyone is confident, are they, Jamie? If you're a Ferrari no. fan, this is squeaky bum time. <laughs> no, uh, we, we were discussing a stat before the podcast that apparently since Ferrari, since Ferrari won in Monza in 2010 with Alonso, Ferrari have won the same number of races as Max Verstappen yep. in the 12 years since. Um, given that Verstappen was 13 when Ferrari won in 2010. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, but I don't expect Ferrari to win this weekend as a spoiler for my predictions. But yeah, based on Spa, you kind of expect a Red Bull show. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I mean, that does bring up a few other interesting talking points that we'll get into uh, in just a moment. But I guess the big news we've had this week is Ferrari are going yellow. Mm. Now, what what do we think? What do we think of the new paint scheme or the livery, we it's should call it? It's super half-hearted, isn't it? Oh, completely. It's like they it's could have so done something interesting and they'd be like, nah, we'll just do this. They could have given us a Renault from a couple of years ago. Yeah, the banana car. That would have been great. Give us the banana Ferrari. Yeah. We want the banana. Get, give us the banana and the banana driver lineup of K Mag and Jolie and Palmer <laughs> the weekend. Then we will be happy. Yeah. That would um, be so funny, actually. Um, it's kind of like people will have forgotten about this, but in Alfa Romeo's uh, Baku livery, they just changed the back of the car to green for some reason. Yep. And it's just like that. It's even more minor, I would say. The only reason it's memorable, memorable, even, that's a word, is. Because it's Ferrari at Monza. If it was any other team or any other track, no one would even bat an eyelid. No, no. That being said, though, credit where it's due, the rear wing does look yeah, peng. Yeah, it does. But like I would the, the old school Ferrari logo on the back, yeah. yellow. Does I would look like good. them to run forward th with that, if, but in white. Yeah. I think. I think it on the normal car. No, it looks in good in yellow. It looks good in yellow. If it's the only yellow thing on the whole car, though, that might look a bit odd. But. I suppose, I suppose. Well, well, someone will have to draw up a render yeah, uh, yeah. for us. But, I mean, we've seen a couple of really, really cool concepts as well. I saw one that was black and yellow. Um, that looked yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Sort of 2019, 20... Uh, basically, they're just trying to copy Renault uh, from a couple of years ago for whatever reason. Well, Renault's Maybe liveries gonna... back in the day were really nice. So I, I still think Alpine's livery now is incredible. Yeah, it is, actually. Yeah. Alpine have still got, I think, one of the best liveries on the grid at the moment. I even like the pink one. Because, no. of course, everyone's forgot about that at the start of that the year. That was terrible. Awful. No, it was a good livery. You can't <laughs> beat a good old BWT livery. I don't know what they do. 2017 was the best one. The it. rest of them were terrible. No, not. The 2017 was the best one, definitely, but it's not the only good one. Um, but I guess, yeah, that was sort of the only big news we had hyped up into the weekend. I was genuinely considering at one point do I buy one of the yellow Ferrari t shirts? 
until I saw the price. Yeah. Did you have a look at this? Did you see this? I haven't seen the price, actually, no. I'm pretty certain it was £80, including shipping. Right, for a t-shirt. For a t-shirt for a team that if you ever wore outside... Anyone that knows Formula One is going to go, ha ha, that's the weekend they took each other out on lap one, remember? <laughs> You're such a chump. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah not, not great. No, I don't, even, great. I don't even look at the prices of F1 merch anymore because it's just ridiculous. So. I, I did almost buy some of the Gunther Steiner stuff that came out a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I, I, I did get to the payment screen for that and then it was like, £10 delivery, you having a laugh. Oh, I do that all the time. I'm not paying Anything that. that I'm buying, I like, you know, try adding on any money for delivery more than like a £1.50. I'm like, I'm out. See you later. It's 2022. You should not have to pay for delivery anymore. Mm. Things should just arrive. They should just doorstep. airdrop. Why don't you just sort them out? Exactly. Just allow me to print it out or something. Yeah. Like it would be so much easier. So, so much easier. But, I mean, any other sort of big news uh, before we get into the weekend? I guess, you know, we, we've got the Monza curse, Jamie. Have you heard about the Monza curse? Oh, I don't think I have, actually. So, in 2020, sorry, even in 2019, Charles Leclerc, he won in Spa. Oh, I have he this. wins in Monza. <clears throat> he crashes out of the 2020 race. 2020, Pierre Gasly is a Grand Prix winner. He crashes out of the sprint race. Oh, that doesn't count. Twenty twenty one. Finished the Grand Prix. This curse is Jamie, rubbish. Al- allow, allow the curse. Allow the- It's better than your Ferrari theory from months back. What was the Ferrari theory about? How they use red paint because it's light. Oh yeah, well that was that like eight year old me. So allow it. Well, it's still, uh, that makes it sound like we did a podcast with an eight year old then. Yeah. <laughs> but twenty twenty one, Daniel Ricciardo. Everyone that thought I left, I never left. He's gonna stack it this weekend, isn't he? Grand Prix time. Wouldn't surprise me. I, I saw rumours of him this morning said Mercedes are considering him as a long-term replacement for Hamilton. Yeah, which, I saw that tweet as well, and it just made would me be laugh. Bizarre when half the drivers on the grid are better than him and cheaper. So, well, what I don't, what I love about that is everyone talks about him being Hamilton's long-term replacement at Mercedes. But he's thirty-three they've, himself. They've already <laughs> hired Hamilton's long-term yeah. replacement. He's in the other car already. Yeah. <laughs> They're not worried they about Hamilton's Bottas replacement. They long-term replacement, really, don't they? They're worried about, yeah, Russell's replacement, who's basically just Bottas 2.0. Yeah. Like, it's not that complicated. Yeah, but I... Yeah, interestingly, the Monza race for the last two years, neither of the top two constructors have finished on the podium, apart from Bottas, yes. I just remembered. Yeah. Bottas, Bottas did finish P two, uh, P three, P three. Sorry, last year wasn't it? But yeah, um, very strange but, results for the last two years. Really, for the last four races at Monza, we've had not the obvious winner. To be fair, uh, twenty eighteen should have been Ferrari domination, fastest in qualifying, one two, and they bottled it. Oh yeah, well, Seb bottled it, and well, was contact. He got unlucky that weekend. To be fair, nah. got the contact with Lewis. Um, and then and Kimi Kimi should have won him. and then messed it up his tyres. Well, it so. was a 2v1 Mercedes yeah, end. Was, they yeah. just strategied him. Um, and then, of course, 2019, spicy engine, but you wouldn't. I don't think you would have <laughs> predicted that going into the summer break, would you? No. That no. Charles Leclerc would have won in Monza. Well, predicting Ferrari course, to cheat is often quite a safe bet. but It's normally a pretty safe bet, isn't it? But still. Uh, of course, then in 2020... Pierre Gasly, no one saw that coming. And then, of course, 2021, Daniel Ricciardo, no one saw that coming either. So, yeah, it's it's delivered some interesting races in recent years. Other other fun fact for you, Jamie, and this is going to test whether you watch my content or not. No, I don't. One <laughs> of the only remaining tracks, Max Verstappen's yet to have a podium at. I was about to say that. I know, I didn't think Max had a podium at there. Nope. So, nope. yeah. What, 21, uh, the curb DNF. killed him. 2020. Well, he, uh, uh, uh. 2020, he uh, retired with a mechanical. It was yeah, the Italian curse in 2020, wasn't it? He was the yeah, worst performing yeah. driver throughout the three Italian Grand Prix. Yeah. Well, worst performing, <laughs> and he had three failures. He but zero still. points, yeah. 19, was that the year he took out Bottas and got a penalty? Or was that the year before? Uh, I think that was. I think that's when that he squeezed year. Bottas on the outside, didn't he? And then got a five yeah, penalty. Yeah, and then claimed he gave him space when he yeah. obviously didn't. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, just it's never prior to now, of course, when, in the time all. he's been there, it's been a Red Bull track because, of course, they've always been focused on high downforce. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Verstappen, I think, when we get to predictions, I think we're, we're fairly, fairly confident if Spa's anything to go by that that duct will be broken. Um, but, yeah, Italian Grand Prix, though, Monza, 
so much history so much history around this venue jamie it really is a track that has seen it all luckily you know there aren't many talks or speculations that it's unsafe in the world of f1 mm -hmm. at the moment because really it sits on at least in my opinion on the list of four tracks that no matter what happens to formula one they can't lose which four are they silverstone monaco silverstone monaco monza spa well, they were very close those... to losing Spa, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I know, and this is what frustrates me so much about it, because those are the four tracks in my eyes that you cannot lose in Formula 1. It, is that a it fair It wouldn't assessment? surprise me if Spa is going onto an alternate... It, it like, wouldn't year surprise on, me. Off. It wouldn't surprise me, but I also think it's insanity that they're even allowing it mm. to happen. I think Monza, for the history and for how big Ferrari are for the sport, I think they won't lose it any time soon. No, no, of course so. not. Yeah, that's good. But, I've actually, I've been to Monza, very cool venue. Yes, you have. Not you? for a Grand Prix. I just went during COVID. <laughs> Nothing was there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's really cool. The banking is amazing. Um, unfortunately, yes. they don't use it anymore. Oh, I think it's pretty fortunate nowadays. Well, yeah, especially it's very, in the hybrids. It's basically concrete, and yeah, it would be pretty uh, horrendous to try and drive a Formula One car on. Um, but yeah, it should be. A, Good race. It's also, it's also one of the shorter races, I find. Um, Time-wise, yeah. It was fast it's got the highest average speed, speed, so yeah. yeah. Makes a bit exactly. of sense. Yeah, um, I think, you know, we've, we've seen races around here be... You know, hour 20? The last couple of races have been carnage fests. Yeah. I mean, we've seen races around here that are like an hour 18, which yeah. is insanely short for a Formula 1 race. Yeah, especially followed by Singapore, which is almost always getting on for two hours. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, they really do. You you lose a lot of time in one just to gain it all back in the next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't. There's really not much to say about Monza, is there? There, just... there is so much to say about Monza, Jamie. <laughs> there is a lot to say about Monza, and you know what? Because you've just said that, I'm going to bring you on to this week's quiz. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. Matt wrote the notes, and there's, I, there's really not much. So you, you. To be fair, I you haven't waffling. helped contribute to the notes. I really haven't. So. There we go. I'll contribute to the quiz. How about that? You you better contribute to the quiz. <laughs> so, Jamie183. Monza. Templar Speed. Home yes. of Ferrari. It's the one every Ferrari driver dreams of winning. Currently, in its 70-year history, 10 Ferrari drivers have won the Italian Ooh. Grand Prix. I'm going to give you one minute. Let me get my timer up. That's quite hard. Quickly. A lot of them really it, it, there is, There's a lot of iconic names here. Mm. I'm I'm just going to say that. Let me... Where's my clock gone? There we go. You have got one minute to name all ten of those drivers, starting from now. Okay, Charles Leclerc. Yep. Fernando Alonso. Yep. Michael Schumacher. Oh, yep. I think Barrichello did it. Yep, twice. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, 02 and 04, the two most iconic who else Ferraris. Was, who was good before the 2000s? Uh... Jody Schachter. Yep. Uh, for, no, Farina was out. Farina? Was he Ferrari ever? Nope. He was out for um, We won it with us, if I'm not mistaken. Fangio? Nope. He never raced Ferrari. for Ferrari um, properly. Oh, Lauda? Nope. Oh, he really? Never won it. John Surtees? Nope. He won. I yep, think I'm pretty sure it. he did. Yep. Um, Mike Hawthorne? Nope. Ascari? Yep. He won 1951 and 1952. How many more are there? Three. Ooh, I should get some more. Phil Hill? Yep. Uh, and your time oh. is up. Oh, that's annoying. I think I did it right. Oh, Gilles. Give... Gilles Villeneuve, surely. Nope. Oh, okay. Who else? I've accidentally restarted my timer. I mean, I'm more than willing to give you a couple of extra seconds just to have a look. But what uh, sort of just... era are they from? I'm guessing they're around 60s, 70s, because I didn't really touch that. One of them is the 70s. One of them is the 80s. I'm just now double-checking that I didn't miss anyone quickly. Cause... Oh, did I, I say... missed one. Did I say louder? Jamie, I missed one. It oh, all went no. wrong. I've never heard... you. Neither of us would have got him, though. So we're not going to worry Ivan Capelli. Much. I don't think he ever won a race, actually. No, he didn't. <laughs> he had a bit of a nightmare at Ferrari. Yeah, I don't think... I'm... There. Kimi... No, Kimi so... never won that, did he? Not with Ferrari, no. No, no, so, I, I don't uh, know. Both of them, you sorry, two of them you definitely would have heard of. It was actually out of eleven. Sorry. Okay, so I got I, eight. I did, That's not I did too miss bad. one random one that I've never really heard of either. But eight out of eleven is a very, very good score. Yeah. I'll so, 
Can you... I'm going to try and give you years quickly because I really want you to try and get these. Okay. So this driver <laughs> won the Italian Grand Prix twice for Ferrari. 1970 and 1975. Ooh. And he was Swiss. Oh, Clay Regazzoni. Spot on, yep. yeah. The other one, which I'm really surprised you didn't get because this was a wildly famous victory. Oh, of no. course, McLaren during 1988. It was the only race that year. They oh, didn't win. of course it was. Of course, they were. About, Gerhard think, Berger, wasn't is, it? It is Gerhard Berger. Yeah. And I think what's often forgot about this was just how close McLaren actually came to, to winning, winning every race well. of 1988. To winning every race that year. they were, I think Senna was three laps from home when he got taken out by a backmarker. And of yeah. course, this was the first race F1 had after Enzo Ferrari died. And of course, it was at home as well. And, and Ferrari their won it. The only won of the year. Ferrari won it. It was their first win. At Monza in about ten years at that point, that well, if I correctly. Yes, it, well, rigged probably. Rigged, uh, yeah. yeah, it was the first time since '79 <laughs> when Jody Schechter won the race. Gerhard Berger won it for Ferrari, and the last one, which I accidentally completely missed off my uh, completely missed off my list, uh, was actually an Italian. It's fifties, I'm guessing. It was like sixty-six. Is it Bobby Charlton? He's not Italian. <laughs> He did something in 66. Uh, he did, yes. I, I feel like there's no chance of me getting this. It Fagioli? L- no. I'm just Ludovico in... Scarfiotti. Oh, Scarfiotti. I, I know the name from lists, but I would never remember it. <laughs> Is that list the one I've just given you? No. Well, probably, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the list yeah, is probably of... drivers have a win who's worse than Hulkenberg, which I used to study. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay uh, but i mean yeah I, I found it really interesting actually going through this list um you know like we said we talk about those two iconic ferraris of the early 2000s the f2002 and the f2004 barrichello won both italian yeah. grand prix yeah. in that car not michael schumacher um schumacher of course won the race five times though for ferrari uh, between 1996 and 2006 of course 2006 as well uh, was that absolutely bizarre unfolding which kind of reached its peak uh, at Monza, of course, of uh, Luca Montezemolo trying to get rid of Michael Schumacher and basically forcing him to announce his retirement at the end of that Grand Prix because Montezemolo had confirmed it pre-race and Schumacher didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that was very harsh. Um, though, too fair, Kimi did deserve a shot in the Ferrari and won the championship the year after. So, Well, Kimi absolutely did deserve a shot at Ferrari, but you know, you, Michael Schumacher still could have absolutely hung on with him. I think there's yeah, no I think Schumacher... That arguably could have 107 probably should have like would have 108 since massa got so close yeah it's a it's, shame it's a timeline <laughs> we're going down now um yeah there we go extra bonus point that i'm sure you will absolutely get can you name the other ferrari powered oh, winner Monza? i was yep. gonna <laughs> <laughs> the only Spot ever on. ferrari engine powered, to win yeah. outside of ferrari madness madness sebastian vettel on that day back in 2008 which i see? would argue could we see? Could we see that second time round with Joe Guan Yu winning this weekend? I'm not convinced. Has though. Well, you know, I if I gonna... was to pick, uh, Joe would absolutely be better than Haas is for odds of winning. Yeah, no, Haas got a good top end car. No. Austria, Canada. Yeah, Joe was Joe was best at resting Canada. Was he? Yeah, well, he was In... quicker than Haas is. Yeah, but the Haas has got screwed. No, he wasn't. Was he? Yeah. Haas came like fifth and sixth. Oh, did they? No mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <but laughs> just that would, made stuff up. I'm just making stuff up. Joe did well in Canada. Fair I know that. What yeah, were you going to say? He sorry. Did, he did. Uh, I still believe that 2008 win is one of the most overhyped wins in F1 history. Well, Bordet qualified fourth, didn't he? Bordet qualified fourth in the other car. Every other team went in with a dry setup to a wet race, pretty much. And Alpha, Ta- sorry, Toro Rosso, even I should say, had a very fast car in the second half of 2008. Especially in the wet. Yeah, especially in the wet and especially at fast circuits. Yeah, into Lagos, Vettel was just chilling in second for half the race. Yeah. And then happens. Spa, Bordet was a lap away from a podium and then bottled it. <laughs> I mean, it is just. just and this is Sebastian but... Bordet, who's terrible. It was useless. Yeah. Uh, genuinely, useless. Gasly's win is better. No, I'm not going to say that. I can't oh. say that. <laughs> Gasly's oh. win was fueled by luck, but he did well to withhold the pressure. So, what do you mean? It, it, dirty air in Carlos Sainz? Yeah, but it's still Monza, isn't it? Slipstream was mad. 
No, it's not the game, Jamie. No, nah, Real life is. Monza should be a track that well, I am genuinely intrigued to see how well real life Monza works this year. Um, you know, because porpoising is going to nerf cars more than I think the slipstream Porpoising is going to we've help. not really spoken much of since the summer break, though, have we? It's not. It's not just a because it's kind of issue. slipped into the main. It's just kind of accepted now, isn't it? But you look at the cars on boards; they're not they're not bouncing anywhere near as badly as they were. Have you seen the Ferraris? Yeah, but they're not as bad. Like when was it Gasly in Bahrain doing like a headbanger down a straight? It's nothing like that. Have you seen the Ferraris? They're still doing it massively. Are they? I'll have to have a yeah. look, keep an eye out for that this weekend. I would, yeah, definitely, definitely say that. Um. Yeah, no, we we briefly touched upon it just a second ago when Jamie believed that Joe Grand you could win the Italian Grand Prix. <laughs> of course, Monza does open the door, though. We've It's kind of been weird, hasn't it? Because always back in the day, Monza was kind of like that track that for the low downforce cars, you know, this could be a big, big chance to sort of really push yourself up the order. Then, of course, when the hybrid technology came in, it kind of got nerfed out a lot. You know, you still had your, your Williams was very strong there, things like that. But could we now in 2022 it really see, you know, the cars with a low downforce velocity have a good shot at being a lot closer to the front? Well, you think so. You think, like, back in the day, whenever Red Bull struggled, you kind of had a lot of teams stepping up into that gap. So, like, Force India used to go really well here. Yep. Uh, Williams in the early hybrid era got podiums basically every year. Um, yep. Massa's last ever F1 podium was at Monza. Yep. 2015. Um yeah. 2015 or was 2016? No, it was 15. It was 50, wasn't it? Because I got double podium. 16 was Rosberg, Hamilton, Vettel, I believe. Hamilton, Hamilton got a terrible start. <laughs> Shock. Um, yeah. I think there's definitely a chance for that. I'm trying to think who would be those teams in 2022. Alpine has. Alpine could, because they had a rocket ship in Baku. <laughs> and the other one that I think is probably underrated here. Alex Albon in that Williams. Oh, yeah. He could be on the verge of the Q3 again. Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, Interesting think, I reckon that could be a real dark horse this weekend. Alex Albon Potentially more points on the way. I'd, I'd like to see him, you know, get a couple more points on the board. You know, he was, the thing is as well with Albon, of course, with Williams this year, is even when he hasn't been in the points, he's often not been that far away either. Yeah, he just has very clean races and ends up like 12th or 13th. Like Which Zanvor, is, he wasn't yeah, far away. Yeah. And things like that as well. And that should have been a track that really did hurt Williams based on their car philosophy mm. at the moment. But should we should we jump into predictions then, Jamie? Yeah, let's do it. Should we should we discuss pole position and top three? I mean, let's be fair. Pole a and lot win. of the <laughs> a lot a lot of the data we're gonna be taking from Spa, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, especially um, in sector, sector one. Sector sector one, so it's gonna be an album pole. An album race victory. To be fair, that um, is, album was generally purple in sector one, wasn't he? He was the he was the <laughs> only sector the entire weekend anyone was quicker than Max Verstappen was Brilliant. sector one. Um, so it is going to be album domination. Williams are going to get yeah, yeah. forty four points and Red jump Bull, uh, all the way up past Alpha. Red Bull family one two three. Red Bull, fa- yeah, yeah, that would be insane, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be we. Yeah, we're still waiting for a Red Bull podium with an Alpha Tauri P three. We had a, a Helmet Marco top four once. A Helmet Marco top four? Yeah. Hungary 15. We... Hung- what? Hey. Do you remember who the top four was? Oh, yeah. It was Ricardo. No, it wasn't. It was Sebastian Vettel, Ricardo Kvyat, wasn't it? Oh, Kvyat, and, Ricardo. And, and Verstappen. Verstappen. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point, I suppose. I mean, let's be fair, I'm sure there's probably quite a few races in recent years where someone that's been affiliated with Red Bull at some point yeah. <laughs> and made up like five of the top six. Um, true. But there we are. Very true. But I'm I'm going to predict first, Jamie, this week, because I'm still behind you overall. Okay. Verstappen pole, Verstappen race victory, <laughs> Perez, Leclerc. You are boring. I am very boring, but I desperately need the points. Too fair, I mean, what it, are the scores yeah. on the doors at the moment? I'm Let me just a lot double ahead. check. Uh, it is 53 to 39 currently, so I'm still yeah. 14 back. I'm going to go Verstappen pole. <laughs> Verstappen Swear. win. Oh, you're just copying me. No, I'm not. I want to say Perez second, but you did that, so I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> ooh. I think the yeah, Mercedes were terrible. I'll go Leclerc P two and Sainz P three. 
Oh, okay. Jamie, Jamie's still betting on Ferrari. Yeah. So what do you yeah. think is going to happen to Sergio then out of interest? Well, he'll just have a Perez weekend where he's a second off the pace for some reason. That hasn't happened this year, really? Well, he was far off. Hungary, in a, I suppose. In Spa, he was missing a lot of pace, but the car was just so quick it didn't matter. It's because Max had a fresh power unit. Mm. Yeah. A spicy engine. A spicy, spicy engine. One last question that I want to ask you, Jamie. Here we go. Before we, before we leave this. I'm just actually looking at the Monza track map back from the 50s and 60s, of course, when you had the banking as well. Would you classify that as a figure of eight circuit? Uh, I need to go and find it. Do you not know the classic version of Monza? Oh, it's just an oval, isn't it? No, but I mean, you have effectively the, the new track and the old track combined. Oh, yes. You? Is it? A... No, it's not a figure of eight, is it? Is it not? It's, it's only just... got one crossover. It's just a bit daft, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it kind of messes with your brain, doesn't it? That's yeah. the weird thing with it. But it, technically, I'd argue that's a figure of eight circuit. Would Fair you enough. Not? It's got one crossover. But it's, no, it's got two it. crossovers, though. Just one of them's extended really long down the main straight. Where's... No. What? Hey. One, one crossover at the bridge down towards Ascari. Yeah. And one crossover, which is the pit straight. That's not a crossover. Is it not? No. How would you? Where where would they cross over on the pit straight? They would just both do it, like on Top Gear, where they'd use the same bit of track twice. No, that's not what happened. I don't know what happened, to be honest. So you come out of Parabolica, you stay in, on what now effectively is the pit lane and go onto the oval, and of course then you poke out of the oval and then go back down what is now the main straight. Oh yeah, that is a figure. How do you right think then? that would have worked? I just that would have been I never insanity. I didn't know they did the old track, like the oval track, with the new track at any point. What I've, I've actually just done an Italian Grand Prix podcast talking about the history with someone that doesn't know the history of the Italian Grand Prix. Well, I've been that there. Old, that, how do you not know this then? <laughs> this well, is I just no thought they only wheel. did the oval or they only did the GP no. track. No, because it was a 10 kilometre track. Oh, wow. They only used it a few times in all fairness. But, yeah, it does yeah, sound pretty ludicrous, but there we go. Absolute, absolute scenes. Absolute scenes. But This has been a bit of a, well, there we go. a very... Uh, unstructured podcast but we hope you enjoyed it yes yeah we, we really do hope let us know your top three uh, down in the comments below as well if you have enjoyed please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed and i guess we will return next weekend to recap the italian grand prix and also console ourselves the fact that formula one's gone for weeks on end yeah. it's it's going to be great 